Ten. Stand by the Tick Studio. Seven. Six. Stand by camera one, mice one and two. Three. Two, one. Take studio. Good afternoon, MCHS. This is MT MCTV. I'm your host, Austin Kennedy. And I'm Tim Evans. We've got a packed show for you today, including a fascinating look into the excellent opportunities and extensive basketball coverage. But first, our top story. The Mournville JV Wolves have been having a phenomenal year in basketball with high confidence. Our JV girls are playing excellent and we are currently second in the zone. Their skills and players have grown immensely as the success blossoms. We sent reporter Dakota Fleming to see how their success is doing for this season. For the 2011-2012 school year, the MCHS Lady Wolves have been doing exceptionally well. We interviewed the coach, Kent Lassard, to see what his opinions are on the season this year. I think it's just watching the kids grow over the course of the season and developing a relationship with them and sharing experiences with them that uh, makes it a special kind of bond that you get with the kids. I think right now we've really come together as a team. Uh, they really support each other on the floor and uh, help each other in practice and things like that. So I'd say teamwork right now is, uh, is really stepped up. Here are some opinions of the Lady Wolves. I enjoy playing basketball because, I don't know, I've always played it throughout my whole life and it's a sport and it keeps me healthy and active and basketball is just a fun sport. <laughs> Our team is doing very well. We've won three tournaments in a row past three weekends. We need to continue rebounding more and executing more on boards and we should be doing great. Far we got two seconds and three goals and we're actually on fire and I hope we keep winning. I've been playing for 10 years, and it's just a rough and athletic sport to be in. We play really tenacious defense. We're a tough team to play against. It's because of our great defense <laughs> and when we nail our shots. Well, we're doing quite well. We finished second in two tournaments and won our last three. So uh, we have a 15-4 and four record, and we have a really tough tournament this weekend, so we're kind of hoping that those experiences will help us uh, succeed again this weekend. For MCTV, this is Dakota Fleming signing off. Yeah, yeah, that was a great piece, Dakota. Thank you. Yeah, great. They did great this year. Speaking of love, how about all that snow we got a couple weeks ago? The snowmobilers were out in full force. Patience certainly pays off. Too true. It's definitely not like last year. To see if the grins on the snowmobilers' faces will stay, let's check in with our meteorologist, Dakota uh, Chandler Arcan, rather. Chandler. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> For our current weather, we have one in Whitehorse, minus 16 in Yellowknife, nine in Vancouver, minus three in Regina, minus seven in Winnipeg, 11 down in Toronto, 11 in Montreal, 13 in Halifax, and five in St. John's. And we have minus 29 in Calhoun. For Alberta forecast. We got minus four in high level, minus three in Fort McMurray, four with some rain in Grand Prairie, seven in Edmonton with some sun and cloud, four in Red Deer, eight in Jasper. We got six in Bam with sun and cloud. Calgary, it's sun and cloud also with 10, same with Medicine Hat with sun and cloud. And for our current forecast is one degree Celsius, with wind southeast of 11, 11 kilometers an hour. Relative humidity is 86%. Sun rises at 7.04 a.m. Sun sets at 7.26 p.m. And for the week, weekly forecast, we got five degrees for Thursday. It's a low of two. Friday, it's eight degrees with a low of zero. Saturday, it's Two with a low of minus five. And Sunday, we got uh, three with minus five. Monday, three degrees also. Tuesday, five degrees. Wednesday, six degrees. Thanks, guys. I'm back to you. Thanks, Chandler. 
hosted its annual coffee house raising raising money for this year's upcoming mission trip to New Orleans. Numerous acts took part, but we sent reporter Jacob Roy to to do this piece. On February 23rd, MCHS's mission team set up a coffee house to raise awareness for their trip to New Orleans. So I talked to Vanessa Kane on why they are going and Doug Kramer, a chaperone, and Brennan Connery, a student, going on the mission trip to explain how long it took to set up this event. We're going to New Orleans because it's been six years since that horrific hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. And even though it's been six years, there's still a ton of work to be done. But because it's the United States, most people think that they're fine. Uh, and it's not true. There's a ton of work to be done. People are in need and we can help them. So why not? Coffee House is set up at the Cultural Center. We have um, approximately 100 to 150 guests coming tonight. And uh, it took, well, we were here at 3 o'clock. Well, everybody was about 4. We had the idea of a coffee house uh, back in September, October. Um, but I don't think we actually started working on the planning of it until January. So, <laughs> but we've had so many other things going on to, to get this whole thing rolling. Uh, it's just been sort of one project at a time and we take care of it as it happened and, and now it's time for the coffee house. I also had the opportunity to talk to some of the performers on what they thought of the coffee house tonight. Oh, it's been absolutely incredible. There's been a really, really great turnout. Um, everyone has just done amazing with this, so, and everyone's put a lot of practice in, so I'm really, really happy with how it's going. Definitely. It was so fun learning when the Saints come marching in because it originated from New Orleans, and uh, it was fun, fun learning about the culture, too. I think it's great. Like, a lot of people have potential to go far in what they're doing. We've got some great dancers, great musicians, and I enjoyed myself on stage with the jazz band, so I, I see the night going very well. Brother Dan. The coffee house like every year, was a hit, and the audience loved it. And what did the audience think of the performance tonight? I thought it was fantastic, like really well done, very like uplifting, and it makes me want to really donate. You know what, it went well, it was a good night. Our performers were confident and ready, and they performed a really polished show. Our mission team members never stopped working. I'm sure you can see them behind me scurrying around working. Um, between the staff, the students, the performers, everybody brought their A-game. It's fantastic. As the night was ending, people from the audience were finishing handing in their names for the silent auction. And Johnny Valerja and Christine McDonald sang Time of Your Life to end everything. And it really was a time of our lives to come to this event. And it will be for the people in New Orleans as well. Because wouldn't it be nice for a complete stranger to come down and help you. For MCTV News, I'm Jacob Roy, reporting. As you just saw in Jacob's piece, efforts are underway to send a team to New Orleans to help rebuild. Fortunate enough to have Mr. Kortash with us in the studio. Mr. Kortash, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, um, why go to New Orleans over six years after the fact? I think uh, even six years later, there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, there's a couple hundred thousand people that still haven't returned home, and there's entire sections of the city that look like the hurricane was just yesterday that have yet to be rebuilt. Okay, um, so what kind of assistance is the group going to provide to New Orleanians? Uh, we're going to be doing a number of different things while we're down there. We're going to be feeding uh, some people that are possibly homeless or in need in the mornings. We're going to be uh, doing some repair work. Um, uh, painting, building, possibly helping to build uh, homes, playgrounds, that kind of thing while we're down there. So uh, Hurricane Katrina was a Category 5 hurricane and many of us don't really understand the true scope of this. Um, can you describe what sites are left behind from the from Harath? Oh, just entire, entire sections of the city, entire city blocks were completely submerged underwater. Hundreds of thousands of people forced to flee uh, their homes. And, uh, and so, yeah, like I said, entire, uh, I, you know, I'll find out more when I'm there, but from what I'm told, there's still entire sections, entire Walmarts and, uh, and big, huge grocery stores and everything that are just left sitting empty that, are, that have been totally abandoned now. So, um, are there any specific people that you're helping? 
Uh, we're going to be going down and working with Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish. Uh, two high schools went down uh, the last couple of years, Margaret Duville and, and, uh, S, uh, and uh, St. Ever High. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be carrying on the work that they did working with uh, that parish down there and helping to do work in that particular area. So um, I hear you raised lots of money from Coffee House. Um, how much more do you need to go? Uh, you know what, I think we're, we're pretty well there. We're waiting for news on a grant from the town and we're hopeful to receive that grant sometime in the next couple of weeks. Uh, okay. But it's been a huge fundraising effort and I think we've reached our goal of close to $45,000. Great, thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Kortesh. I'm sure you'll make MCHS proud. Great, thank you. All right, moving on to other news. As the basketball season wraps up, the Senior Lady Wolves are reflecting on their excellent performance this year. With injuries to their star players, they did well, defeating Edwin Parr to take the coveted number one spot in the North Central Zone. With a three-win streak, we sent our sports reporter, Dakota Fleming, to see how the season has affected the girls. Basketball season coming to an end. The girls walked away with only two wins, but a lot of pride. I asked a few girls from the team if they feel like they've grown closer together. I think we definitely got closer because at the beginning of the year, we weren't really friends, didn't really know much about each other, and now we're just closer. We spent more time with each other and know a lot more about each other. But with all our team bonding and overnight trips, it's changed how we are together. At the beginning, we all had our own individual groups, and then at, by the end of it now, we all talk to each other and we don't split up into groups. Becoming a teen wasn't an issue for the JV girls, so to get to the root of their problem, I asked them where they think they have improved and where they think they might need some work. After all these practices, our ball handling and passing have improved so much. We still have a little bit to do on our shooting. We definitely have improved a lot from the beginning of the season. We couldn't run very much, like we were out of breath in the first like two seconds going down the court. And so that's better and our shooting's better. We played good and we just couldn't seem to get baskets, but good teamwork. On March 3rd, the girls played their last game together as a team. I asked them whether they were excited or disappointed that the season was over. I'm kind of disappointed because I love playing basketball and I got really close with all the people on my team and my team is just like my second family. I love playing with them and I just love spending time with them. I like all the sports that I do and everything and it's just, but I'm a little excited just because then volleyball's starting and I'll try out for that too. All in all, the JB girls had a fantastic year and we hope to see them all next year. For MCTV, I'm Amanda Edwards. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to join us again on March 15th for more local news, including a piece on the courageous volunteers in the Warnville Fire Hall. And a piece on the Sturgeon Vet Clinic Volunteer Program and a piece on the Alexander students. Any more record snowfalls for us this weekend, Chandler? Looks like smooth sailing from here, boys. Awesome. I'm going snowmobiling. I don't know about you guys. Anyway, for MCTV, I'm Tim Evans. I'm Austin Kennedy. And I'm Chandler Arcand. Coney 2012. Have a great day. Goodbye. Did you just say 2020-12?